Hi folks, welcome to episode 32 of the Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast. I'm your host Eva and I'm coming to you from my home in Perth in Scotland. I want to thank you all in advance today. Um, as you can hear, I am fairly husky and I wanted to speak to you all again before the new year comes and to wish you a great one when it does arrive. You can find me in all the fun places on the internet. I'm Eva Christie Hand Knitting on Facebook and Tumblr. I'm at Eva Knits on Twitter. And my personal Ravelry page, you'll find me as Pan Within. We have got a group for the podcast as well in Ravelry. So if you type in the magical words, Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast, in the groups tab, then you'll find us. That's where you want to be to take part in any cows and any yarn aways or giveaways and to be eligible for those you also have had to subscribe to this podcast and you'll just find the little button just down there somewhere on YouTube to be able to do that and don't be shy to give us a, a thumbs up, a like, if you like what you're seeing today. I hope you guys have had a, a lovely Christmas or festive time and um, whatever you celebrate, whether that be the Yule, Solstice, Hanukkah or Christmas or even if you don't at all but you enjoy being around family, I hope if you were able to that you did get to spend some time with your, your loved ones and that you're, you're doing really well. We had a, a nice quiet one here. Josh and I went out to spend a little bit of time with his mum his sister and his nephew and they, they don't live that far away from this. They're maybe at a 10 minute walk but it was very stormy conditions here um, on Christmas Day and as luck would have it that the, the moment we stepped out our door so was our neighbour and she was on her way to go and visit her family who live in Pitlochry 30 miles up the road. So she very kindly offered us a lift round so that, that, was, that was great. We weren't too windswept and interesting by the, the time we arrived at our family. But that's not what you're here for guys, you're here for the, the knit along news of the Glasgow Subway knit along and to see what sort of um, nitty things I've been up to as well. So let's get on that shall we. So first up, the Glasgow Subway knit along is almost at an end. This is the 30th of December 2016 I'm recording. Midnight tomorrow, or bang on midnight, um, is, is the closing date for this. I'm going to trust that you're honest, I'm going to give you a couple of days to update and count up all your, your meterage, which is what I'm currently doing as well at the minute, I'm grabbing all my notes together to get that sorted. And there will be two prizes, in fact I'm going to pause for two seconds and I'm going to go and grab the prizes because I didn't bring them down but I do have them available. There we go. Right, now there are two prizes, but they will both be drawn by a random number generator. So there is the overall grand prize, which will come from the... What have I called the thread? I think I've called it Kenning Park, all alight here. So that's the thread that you want to go into now. Delaney33, I noticed that you posted in there that you had finished and you have since deleted your post. I hope everything's okay, as far as I'm aware they did actually complete the entire journey. Um, if you have, please do go and post again because we take to draw your number and then you, you miss out. <clears throat> um, particularly when you've been participating for, for so long in the cow. So that is the thread you want to post in guys and the overall winner will win a skein of this. Now this was a custom dye that I spoke to Sunshine Stewart who is my mum in it and she has an Etsy shop. She's based just outside Glasgow, I believe, and she has a, a Glasgow theme sort of yarn dyeing range. And this is something I didn't know that she'd already kind of been thinking on. I never quite got as she wanted, right? And then, she well, she was delighted to be asked. Um, so I bought these from her. So this is yarn dyed inspired by the Glasgow Subway network system. And these are the colours of it. So this is called Glasgow Underground. It's a superwash merino sock yarn. It's 75% merino wool and 25% nylon. It's 425 metres in these, which is 100 grams. So I have two. So the overall grand prize winner will get one with some other bits and pieces. And the runner up who will be someone from everybody who's actually taken part. Now to do that, it's not going to be a random number generator, but it's going to be numbers in the yarn bowl or, or something like that. 
there is also, and I need to cut this in half, we've got some saltire ribbon and this is the Scottish flag. And then my mum made a project bag as well for the overall winner. <coughs> Excuse me, me minute. In fact, I'm going to pause. Excuse me, guys. Right. So my mum made this. She she makes some project bags. Um, I've sold a few um, on her behalf. This is a triangular one. So it's perfect for just like a little project or whatever. It's got Scotty dogs, which are kind of like a Scottish sort of symbol on them. Lots of syringes. It's just a plain white lining. No, it's not. It's got slight, slight little pattern on it, which probably won't pick up. Oh, I don't think it's picking up, but there, there is a, a subtle, subtle sort of pattern in there as well. So my mum donated that to the podcast, which was lovely of her. Um, my mum's called Barry, um, just in case, in case you were interested. But there you go. So she sells them through me occasionally. Um, she doesn't have an Etsy, but. When I eventually get round to that, I may have some of her project bags there as well. So yeah, time's ticking guys. Um, get all your meterage and get everything up to date. And what I'll do um, a couple of days after the deadline is I will... <coughs> excuse me. I will lock the All The Light Here thread. And as for the rest of the threads, what I'll do is I'll just archive them. So they're out of the way the main page so it's not clogging everything up. So if you want to see how long it's going to take you to get around the entire system and you, you're a long way off completing it, then you can use those, those threads just for your, your own sort of pleasure to kind of update and to track your progress. Um, but that, that is the actual sort of challenge and it along, if you like, will we'll be over at that point. And that will free me up some space to put up some new threads about um, 2017 being the year of embracing your stash and mindful mindful thought about um, your own choices and pattern choices and related sort of stuff. Um, thank you very much for all your support um, over the last couple of, of episodes. Um, I've only noticed two subscribers unsubscribed and another two new subscribers have subscribed anywhere, two or three. And there was one thumbs down. I've had one person leave the group again. Um, they regularly do that. They come in and out. Doesn't bother me. I'm being true to myself, folks. And that's what it's about. This is not a, a yarn infomercial podcast or something that is heavily sponsored by people donating prizes. It's it's not what it's what I'm about. And I'm I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I've explained my reasons for it over and over and you guys get it. So that's all good. So shall we move on to, let's move on to what's in my needles at the moment. So it's not in this one, it's in this one. There is no rehomed yarn um, this week but I did get a little present. Um, this is actually a present for my birthday. My mum gave me money for my birthday I hadn't bought anything and then I saw this and thought I'm going to have it. This is actually a cosmetics bag and it is the cutest little bunny rabbit in the cabbages and he's got little friends like little ladybugs and busy bees. This is thorn black and peel. Um, it's hand printed in Great Britain so it's printed fabric. It's very, very well made, even as a cosmetics bag. It's lined in spray fabric that would be washable, or maybe not washable, but sponge cleanable. And it is, <coughs> excuse me, the perfect size for socks. So that's what I've got in it. Look at the bag, the bag's different. The eggs going, he's going peekaboo. I do like a bunny rabbit. Um, socks. Um, did I say that I got this at a local farm shop? Maybe I was just thinking that, but yeah, so I supported local business as well, which is this fab, which is what I like to do. So, in my bag, <coughs> I have, so thank you for bearing with me guys with my throat, 
I do have some herbal tea here but it's just I think it's shifting but it maybe wasn't the best time to have it and Josh is out at the gym at the minute which is why I'm recording just now. So this is my label. Flotta Sock. Um, Ringo. I'm not quite sure which is the brand. I think Flotta Sock might be the, the name. The colour is 6000. It's 75% new wool and 25% nylon. It's a superwash wool. 420 metres, 300 grams. It's made in Italy, even though it's a German yarn brand. And I, it comes in a ball, but I wound it up because I find it easier to knit socks from cake yarn. This isn't really showing, but it is a self-striping yarn and I love it. I cast this on last night and Josh, I think, was just watching some basketball because he's got time off from work at the minute so it's lovely just spending a bit of time with him and I just cast off a pair of socks. I thought I'm going to get on with my night, my next pair. So these are the Vanilla Latte Socks Recipe by Virginia Rose Jeans. So it is a, it's a recipe. She assumes that you will know what size of the needles that you prefer to, to work on to get gauge, how many stitches you will cast on to get your perfect size and gauge again. And then it's roughly it's amount of centimetres or inches and then do this part of the construction, this part of the construction. She gives you three choices of heel. Um, so I think I'm going to do a eye of partridge or an eye of partridge heel in these socks and she gives you two two options as well. So there's your standard sort of, um, they call it a round toe when you just kind of do the decrease like these, do you decrease and then you kitchen her. And she's got a star toe as well and I've not done a star toe before and I'm not 100% sure that I like the look of it but it's only yarn, it's only time and you can rip it back and start again. I keep really detailed notes of where I am and how many rounds I'm knitting anyway. So that doesn't bother me but I might try a star toe just to be a bit different. So I have done my choice of round of how many rounds of rib I would want to do with my usual number cast stitches on a 2.5 millimeter needle. I do mine on two mini circulars. These are my high higher sharps and then it just goes down into this. It's like a wee mock rib pattern. Sorry the lighting. It's not great here. So I'm just sort of following that down but I'm loving loving the striping of it and the way it just kind of merges and melts from one colour into the next and you can't see but it's about every four rows there's a colour change and there's some very subtle because there's two different colours here. This is like a lighter blue and then it kind of goes into a more sort of purpley blue and there's different kind of shades of browns and rusts here as well. So this is fab. I'm really enjoying working on this and I'm just powering through that. That's what's on my needles right now and we'll continue into 2017. I've finished two items as well, which I'm thrilled about because I got Josh's socks done in time for Christmas. These are the magnificent Josh socks people. So, cuffs and toes were done in a contrast yarn and I've managed to use it all up bar um, a few grams, which is great. This is Knit Global and I want to say it was a French navy colourway, it was something, something like that. And this is some hand dye. And it's sort of a semi-solid traditional stitch, slip stitch heel, gusset, excuse me. Josh absolutely loves them so I am thrilled that I got them done two days before Christmas I think it was, I got the pair finished, got them wrapped up. It was a great feeling having all my, my Christmas knits done so that was grand. And it meant that I could start to do some selfish knitting, I could spend some 
time giving some love back to my blanket, my scrub blanket, which had um, been hiatus for a while. And I could finish these socks, which I was desperate to finish as well, which are for me. And I will not be eligible for anything in Kirsten's, you know, box of socks, Cal. Had I just done selfish knitting on socks for myself, despite starting it in like May or something, then I would have actually done enough pairs. But I didn't, because about half those pairs have been for other people. And that's fine, because I've just enjoyed knitting socks. So these, which still have to be blocked, but they just came off last night. For me. And I love them. I love, love, love them. So, my rib, my cuffs, and my toes are in cascade and I don't have the label to hand so I just know it's a four ply 75% merino 25% nylon blend I want to say it's 220 but I'm not sure I know that the iron comes in a 220 but I'm not sure if the sock yarn does but that was great um, I don't normally do contrast toes and cuffs and I was a bit concerned that because of the main body which is also my mum and it's in kelpie and that was the yarn I was desperate. I've been coveting it for a long time before I met Sunshine at Perth Festival of Yarn and bought this. It was 365 metres, so I thought if it, I could got enough to do a full pair of socks for me, I don't think I'll have enough to put a square in my, in my metre square blanket. And I just loved it so much that I, I desperately wanted a square to put in there because the idea is about memories. So I did put in contrast um, cuffs and toes. And I think it works because it has got the wee speckles of red in the yarn and it is near enough, damn it, spot on the red. I love this. The light just isn't doing this justice so I'm going to have to try and get some really good photos out in natural light. It's fab. There's like a, no it's got to say a million, it's not. There are so many shades of teal and turquoise and sea greens and mossy greens and it's just gorgeous and then sort of like chocolate brown that's even that's kind of changeable. I love these. Um, my mum and dad were up visiting yesterday and I was showing my mum it and I think she wanted to steal them. She's got the same, same size feet as I do. And she was she was loving them so I am utterly utterly thrilled that my last pair of socks for 2016 are these with a gorgeous hand dyed yarn and Kelpie, this version of Kelpie because I think um, Sunshine does do it in different bases. This is 75% and 25%. I think it's super wash but don't quote me on that. So that's my mum and it's. And Sunshine will be coming back to the Perth Festival of Yarn. She will return in 2017. So she, she is one vendor that you do not want to miss. She is so talented. I think these might be my favourite socks of the year. Right, we're about to move on to my blanket. Brace yourselves guys. I got 10 squares done so far and I'm thrilled about that. So first up I'll show you the two that I've got on this section. So I've got both of these squares added. So this is, oh, sorry, you're gonna get the light through. This is Rico Superba Tweed from the socks that I did for my neighbor Don's daughter. And this one here was part of a swap from Ingaros of the Knitting Diaries. This is Hedgehog Fibres in the colourway Crybaby. It's got a really kind of subtle light colours, little pops in that. And I just, I really, I love my mitred square blanket anyway. What I really loved was I had a gorgeous selection of mini skeins from other podcasters, from swaps and um, that I had here to, to add in, I've been desperate to add in, so it was great to be able to do that on holidays and it was just relaxing and, and such as well. So we'll do this side first. 
because the other eight squares are in here and there's just not enough room to get all of this in the camera so we'll just move them along. So this here is from Opal Nightlife. This square um, has been left over from the pair of socks that I did for my podcaster Festive Swap Swap. Try again, podcaster Festive Sock Swap and I can say now that my socks I've been showing you went to Kieran of Skeens, or he pronounces it Skeens, the Skeens in the Sky podcast. Um, he's received his socks now and he's got them, they fit which is always a relief and he says he loves them so I'm utterly thrilled with that. Then we've got this one <coughs> which was Kinkle Zigzag. I don't think it had a colour way name. It certainly would have it a number but I don't have the label anymore. This was left over from the pair of socks that I knit for Tracy Markey who is the owner of Lagenfeld Studio. This one. Oh my goodness guys. I've heard so many podcasters sort of like, I won't say wax lyrical but that's not the right word, they've been rhapsodising, I think it's the phrase that I'm looking for, about how amazing Felici is and I've never experienced it before, my goodness, wow. I didn't know you could get a sock yarn, a really durable sock yarn, it's just such amazing quality, it's is unreal. So. Yeah, I can totally see what everyone is, is going on about now. This is Felici Dark Side, which Ingeros sent me as well. This one is an opal mini skein, which came from Kirsty, who is a Little Bee podcast. I love it. I think it's it's one of the, sorry, the animal ranges one and just slightly gutted because it's unusual for opal, well it's not unusual for opal but usually in opal minis um, a 10 gram size or as my squares are these are 71 stitches in a 3 millimeter needle you get the full sort of repeat an opal in a square this size and the grey was just about to come in so I would have liked a little bit more grey in the square but it it is what it is and yeah, it's just brilliant. I love those natural sort of animal inspired colourways. Then I'll turn this up on its side just to work along. This is a hand dyed skein that I did um, in the yarn adventure and it just had a, a slight hiccup on part of it so I kept it for myself. It doesn't have a colourway name. You know, waste not want not and all that. This one is also from Kirsty, sorry Kirsty Little B and um, this one had a number and she'd written them all down and I didn't check before I started podcasting today so I'm really really sorry can't tell you what this one is <clears throat> at least I think it's in the Kirsty this one's from Carolyn so this one's from Car was this one from Carolyn might have been in which case the tag would be in there Anyway, we're moving on. This one came from Carolyn. This one is, sorry, I've got it written down in the book in front of me. This is Turtle Pearl, which came from Nova Scotia originally. And it's, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, it's Gatineau Fall. And then this one, you've already seen today, this is leftover from Josh's socks. I wasn't sure how much extra I would need because he likes his leg length longer. That's his leg length before the heel. Heel flap. Yeah, so I did have plenty. Um, but I might not have had enough actually to do the full cuffs and toes as well. But it's it's done, they're knitted, that's all all good. So thrilled, absolutely thrilled to give my blanket some love. So I have three sections that are five squares by five squares, which is a really good size, and I'm just working on getting the fourth section. Um and up to date as well. I have some mini skeins so I will be putting that in one of the threads I'm doing for 2017 Embrace the Stash. There will be a thread for swaps once we're into the new year and I'll have a few a few items up for swapping on that and minis will be some of them because yes yeah, it's, it's always good to swap a few minis to get a few more in your blanket. What am I reading? 
as we go on to any other business. Well, I'm still reading Jumping Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Here we go. I'm on Goodreads. I haven't updated it today. Um, I am probably just about, I'm less than 100 pages from the end, from volume two, and then we'll go on to volume three. I think I'm about 560 odd pages through the entire, entire series. So that's pretty good going. Um, what else has been going on? Just, just stuff. Stuff's been going on. I've not really been watching anything of great interest to you guys to kind of talk about that I can think of. Anyway, I didn't know anything down. What else is going on? Pod love. I'd like to give out a bit of pod love, guys. Um, so, I can't remember, and I'm really, really sorry if I've not mentioned you before, Rachel. The crafty historian is Rachel. Um, I believe she's Rachel Ravenclaw across some of the social media. She is a history student at the University of York. She's at home at the moment. She's just got a few podcasts out and she's a big fan of scrapbooking as well. She's quite, although she's been knitting for five years, she's quite new to a lot of the new knitting techniques and yarns and things. And she quite often has a, se a segment where she's asking for help. So if this is the sort of podcast that you like, then go out and just Give it, a, give it a try. We've also got, and again apologies because I thought I've mentioned you before and I just feel absolutely dreadful that I haven't, but Jen. Jen who is Vivationitz in Ravelry, um, who has been a massive supporter of my podcast and very active um, on a lot of the threads in the group as well. She started up a podcast not so long ago. She's got a pilot and another couple of episodes out. Um, her podcast is called From the Barn, From the Barn podcast, she's on YouTube as well and go give her a wee bit of love and support as she starts out in her podcasting journey. And then one that's new to me and there doesn't, there don't seem to have been any additional episodes uploaded in the last year um, and I just kind of dove in round about the middle to kind of give it a try and see what I thought and it's a podcast I would love to watch a lot more of so well, we'll see what's happening, but that was Stitch and Loop, who is Dagny, who's based in Iceland as well. And I didn't, I wasn't aware that there were any more other Icelandic podcasters apart from Inga. Um, I can't remember if Inga, Inga told me of someone, but I think it might have been somebody else who was Norwegian or Swedish or, or something. One of the Scandinavian countries, and I, I don't mean that to be disrespectful, I just genuinely can't remember because it was when we were doing our Skype session and yeah, you know it's like you you know something down whatever notebook or or whatever's to hand, and then yeah, sometimes things get mislead slightly. But yeah, Dagny, who is stitching the loop, um, I'll be going back and I'll be watching all her episodes. And although she hasn't recorded in a year, um, I do hope that maybe she's just having a hiatus and she's just coming back because I just loved listening listening to her. She's just got a lot of that aesthetic that that really sort of appeals to me. Um, and a podcaster and, and just about the sort of person, person that they are and, and what they're into and such. I think I'm going to sign off here guys. I really am struggling as the day's going on. But I, I've wanted, I desperately wanted to speak to you all again before 2016's out. I hope 2017 is going to be better for all of us because let's be honest it's been a total shit of a year. Um, a lot of positive things have happened for me. Um, and I won't go through them all, but you know, Josh and I moved into our forever home. We gained Simba. He chose us um, to be his forever family. So we, we got a third cat, even though that wasn't planned. I started podcasting. Um, I founded the Melted Moglet Dye Works yarn label. I continued my design work. I founded the Perth Festival of Yarn and, and that returns in 2017 as well. So on a positive, on a, a personal level, there's been a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations, but there's been a lot of sort of positive change that's been going on as well. And, you know, I, I, I'm i not really one for being kind of proud or, or talking about pride or whatever, but you know what, I, I've not done bad and it's stuff to, to build on and it's shown me that although, although life hit me some pretty unfair blows a couple of years ago that I am fighting back and I, I continue to do so and it's, I'm really quite blessed. So that's that's great. Um, I think the the worst thing about 2016 for me was losing losing David Bowie, who was my hero and the reason I got into to music and everything. And I've spoken about that before. And there have been so many sort of iconic 
celebrities and major game changers and everything who we've, we've lost in this year but it, it is, it's the age of, of celebrity and this is just what's going to happen. It is very sad but I want to wish you love and happiness and you know wish us a really positive 2017 for all of us but that, that starts with us as individuals as well. So happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sewing, happy crochet, happy whatever it is that you do. Um, I'm sending you all big virtual hugs and much love and I will see you when the new year comes. If you're going out and you're celebrating Hogmanay or New Year's then stay safe guys and see you next year. Bye!